Jap has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Hmm. In his haste, Hastings tore the envelope. my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time. Hastings photo album. Hastings' photo album he is very proud of his bag. Bexilancy, Sussex, population 24,703. Delhi Flicker, July 30, 1935. ABC affair, no progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexil and Andover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Unfortunately, they have not yet helped to find him. Delhi Flicker, July the 26, 1935. The Bexil Horror. Young maid strangled on the beach. Killer struck at midnight. Hello, Jap. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. It is not a good time. It is not a...
pour Mr. Poirot. Not so good at this little criminal... It is not a good... Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. Hastings, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voilà. It only took a minute. Poirot, you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Right. Let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this... Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the I characters in the two letters. I have to find some other similar. Hmm, the W is not. Nothing to report for these characters. Of course. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to... Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right, the A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap.
I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. This place is very calming. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. The body is just in front of a bush. One of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. It is pointless. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece. Much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. An ABC guide, the murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical-shaped area, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood over a range of more than one meter. 
Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. There is something elegant about her. She has good taste, except perhaps in her choice of jewelry. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to question him. It is a once-in-a-lifetime... My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. And uh, did people of the village know Sir Carmichael's habits? I don't know. It's possible. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At eleven in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. Was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh! Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair! I have to help Miss Grey get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. There are some very valuable objects here. Traditional Chinese map, facsimile, 
South is on the top of the map. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. The interior is richly decorated. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. Sir Carmichael's... Mm, it's locked. The turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. The cardinal points. This book could maybe help me. Each cardinal point is associated with one animal and one color. In the middle sits the imperial dragon, and out of respect, all the others are turned towards him. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Logan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsai Chuston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. She appears to be very flustered.
She's unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. Did you have a good relationship with your employer? He treated me well, and I am sorry for his death. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. What were you doing yesterday evening at the time of the murder? I was sleeping. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with some lanterns and... They found the body. What are your feelings about Franklin Clark? What an odd question. Of course I think he's a good man. He's energetic, nice, very sociable. Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offence. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right-hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Monsha Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Oh, just a minute. I'm getting dressed. Cursed, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes, indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Cast, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies, my throat is burning, and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. 
Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me as things. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah, is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. <laughs>